to see a better way to. Well, actually, you're you're, you're on with us. I, I didn't have time to, to do that, but welcome to this Truth of the Light event. I am James Valentine. I was going <laughs> to life coach, killer, and teacher, and I am here with Tim, Doctor Fun McGinnis. Um, he is the creator and founder of the Dr. Fun Institute for Intentional Thought Transformation. Um, he loves to entertain, educate, and inspire people to have fun and live from the heart. He is a songwriter, rhymer, speaker, poet, inventor of transformational resources, motivator, listener, and linguist. So join me in, welcome, in welcoming Tim, Dr. Fun McGinnis. How are you, my friend? That's Wonderful. I want to meet this guy, whoever you're talking about. Sounds like a great guy. I'm like, that. let's get that guy. But I was like, yeah, I can't, I can't disagree with anything you said, but I'm like, really? You have, you have a gift of putting it all together like that. I did, did my homework, my friend, did my homework. Um, you did. I read that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's, so let's begin. Who is Tim, Dr. Fun McGinnis. Well, uh, that's a big question. Well, okay, in a nutshell, I've always been a very passionate, intense person. I've always asked questions. I wanted to know, why are we doing this? Uh, I always wanted to understand how it all worked. And yet I grew up in a family where that questions weren't really encouraged. So I had, to, I grew up with a lot of angst, a lot of tension, a lot of well, I fit and I didn't find answers quickly. So what, what that does is it makes you ask bigger and bigger and bigger questions. And yeah. it's only been recently that, it, that it's all come together. So I spent most of my life kind of saying, I really want to fit in. I really want to know my, my dream, my passion, but I never found, I had pieces of it. And it wasn't right. until I left, if I'm not going to play around anymore, that it all had time to come together. So I think when we have a big vision, sometimes when you have a big vision, it doesn't come together until you can understand, you can put it together. And it took me so long, but it's always worth it. It's always worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's funny that you say that. I was kind of, I was raised to respect authority and there's nothing wrong with that, but it was also not to question authority. So yeah, you you weren't able, you didn't feel the freedom to ask those kind of questions that maybe you had thought. But the good thing is that kind of sets people on their own journey of understanding and finding out what the truth of something is. Um, one thing I like about you, Tim, is that you are one of the most free-spirited beings on the planet. At any moment, at any time, you're able to break out in song or have an energy that just uplifts people everyone around you. However, you share with me that you were not always in this place. You share with me that that you live most of your life in kind of what you call a, a, a place of conflict, a conflicted state. What did what do you mean by that? What kind of conflict were you dealing with? Question. Well, I happen to be a very intense, playful, free freedom seeking person. Right. Also, I don't have that, you know, F you, everybody, because I still care what people think. And so right. I lived kind of in this pre pressure cooker of I want to do the right thing, but that's not it. And, and it's like all through my school, it's like Tim has great potential. He's really smart. But if he would just stay in his seat and stop talking more. <laughs> and it's like I always had something to say. I always had I always had an opinion. I always had something to say. And for most of my life, that wasn't welcomed. So you get a little bit rebellious, a little bit angry. And I lived most of my life angry. And I, I although I tried to, it was like I never found a place in the system. Yeah. But I also didn't know what my message was. I always admired people that said, I didn't fit in the system. So I went and did this. And now I have a multi-million dollar company doing things. Out, and I'm like, how do they do that? I say, I didn't. And I'm, as you know, I'm a real here and now person. I'm a real, I, I can find inspiration anywhere, anytime. And yet that doesn't really fit inside the four walls of eight to five. Or, you know, I was yeah. a classroom teacher because I love the students. I love the adventure. And during that time, I, I bilingual, but there were some rules and restrictions, lesson plans. I was like, ah, ah. 
and I lived my life and it it's like that didn't fit it's like you go to the shoe store and you try on all the shoes and you're like do you have any more they're like nope you're like oh, I'll put on the one that fits the best and yet it still right, hurts your right. feet and I'm didn't know why yeah but what that's given me what I, what I love getting James love perspective I love seeing the big picture and so when yeah. you've spent 50 years plus learning what doesn't work yeah you understand you understand how to help others how to inspire others how to be your sign what you love it feels so good yeah and I'm still finding it but it feels so good to go oh those shoes never fit because I had to get some custom made. Yeah. Everybody, you can't, yeah. you can't all go to the store and find your shoes. Many people, you got to get your shoes custom made. Right. There are no dreams. There are no shoes that fit your dream. And yet you say, but nobody knows how to make those shoes. Like, you know what? It's not time. It's not right. time. One of, my fav- one of my favorite stories I made up, invented it, is of a, ask a 16-year-old boy. Mm. He, he says, I want to be an internationally renowned motivational speaker, teacher, trainer. And you say, oh, really? What's your message? Well, 16. I don't really have a message yet, but I know I want to help people. Well, okay. How about you spend the next 30 years getting a message? Yeah. That's what I did. I spent the next 30 years getting a message, which meant I walked around and, you know, didn't know what it was. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. sometimes I want to tell people, sometimes you don't you're not living your dream right now because your message is not ripe yet. Your message is not fulfilled. It's not complete yet. And you want it's the right. That's powerful, Tim. That's really powerful, because a lot of people feel that pull to want to do something great, want to do something that has an effect on the world. But I, and, and it's and it's a true feeling. It's it's. You know, there is real purpose there, but you're right. A lot of us don't have the message yet and we're still crafting the message. So that's a power. That's powerful that you say that, because some people do jump out there before before it's time. And then when they face failure or what they call failure, then they question themselves. It's just that their message wasn't together yet. Right. So I like that. So your message is fun. How do we go? How do we get to fun? Yeah. You know, and let me say fun means engagement. Mm-hmm. It means it means passion. Basically means that time when you lose track of time. Everybody okay. knows that feeling. It's like, like where did the time go? Yeah. It was so fun. Fun really about you you. You doing you finding a way to make <clears throat> you finding a way to make your life feel good to you, and that's gonna look different for one else and it will it's gonna take you time especially if no no one in my life was a role model for me no right. one in my family is anything close to the way i am they i had no one to look at i just knew that that person that person that person i want to do what they're doing but they their shoes don't fit me their right. shoes don't fit me so fun is about release it's about letting go it's about allowing it's about being in the moment it's about you know it's about finding what feels good to you and doing it more and more and more little by little every day. Right. For some people that might mean reading a book for six hours, but for me, it might mean singing and dance. I love music. It might mean hanging out with people, but it's, you have to find that within. So something that fulfills you, I'm assuming then, right? Whatever fulfills you is the fun part. Is that Anything fair? that feels fun, light, anything that's fun. It's, it's like this. I have this almost obsessions. Somebody in town and they're looking at a map. Part of me wants to jump over there and say, y'all need help? <laughs> and it's that sense of, it's that sense of what, a good question would be, what pulls you? What pulls you? What things do you just, oh, I want to get in that. I, yeah. Ooh, I want to be doing that. And if you yeah. don't know, that's okay. But maybe it's still building. Maybe it's still developing. But the question is, what pulls you in? That's what your fun is. Interesting. Let, let me let me let me go with that. So go with it. In, in a society where people are living, they got all, may have all these lavish things. They got the white picket fence and the the husband, the wife, and the, but if they're unfulfilled, and you know, but a lot of them are 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 unfulfilled. I mean, we see the post on Facebook about the fun times and the marriages right, and. Right. 
anniversaries, but you know, you see the you see behind the scenes the underlying fear, sadness, unhappiness. So so for them, are we saying that they should find what makes them happy and pursue that? What makes them feel a sense of purpose? Yes, but this is one thing I learned, James. When I wasn't living my dreams, I really wanted to encourage other people. I used to be a life coach. I used to want to help other people, help other people. And I said, wait a minute. I got to show by my example, not by yeah. my words. And everybody comes into this world with a different energy, a different spirit, a different passion. And some people build their life. And it's so constructed. It's got house, job, kids, responsibilities. It's so big, they, they might never get out of it. Because their spirit, but some people will not rest until they find it. Every spirit, a different, uh, a, like my family, they're all living their life. Would I say they're blissfully happy? No, but they're okay with it. They're cool. You know, when you can't, when you can't do it anymore, that's when you got to change. And so I want to show people that there's a different way. And if if their spirit is looking for that, it will they will guide them. Everyone's inner guidance guides them to the next step for them. And it's not for me to say, and that's right. why I try to stay out of the, I try to stay out of what everyone else is doing the, as much as I can, because I don't know how they are experiencing that. I know how I would experience it, but they might be loving it for yeah. someone to get a brand new car, the car of their dreams. It might fulfill them who am I to say it doesn't, but it doesn't fulfill right. me. And if they're looking, it's like, for someone to show them a different way to live, I want to be that example through the way I live. And if they like it, they're welcome to be inspired. Yeah. So now a, a lot of what holds people back, though, Tim, is 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 fear is is kind of they've kind of gotten conditioned to be in a certain way. So they 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 see across the bridge where they want to be. But that bridge seems kind of rickety. And they don't they're unsure about crossing. Uh, yeah, it's scary. It's what scary. would you what would you say to them? Because obviously you have crossed that bridge and you found a great purpose. What would you how would you encourage somebody to, to take a chance and cross that bridge? I wouldn't stay there. Stay there. Stay, stay, stay inside your stay inside your prison. Stay, stay there. If you if if you don't spend every day and night. Think about the movie Shawshank Redemption. People, they spend day and night, day and night, how to get out, how to get free. If you don't have the passion to get out, you're not going to get out. I'll leave you people who feel trapped, people who say, oh, man, and they see me and they see how I'm living maybe, and they go, oh, Tim, I love that. It's going to build in them. It's going to build. It's going to build until the next logical step. It's, it's, it's like a process, like a seed. It's little by little, little by little. I don't try to get anyone to leap because if they don't – if they – like when I decided to leave everything, James, nobody mm -hmm. told me, nobody knew about it except me. It came from the inside out. I yeah. knew, James, when I decided I'm not going to pay rent anymore and I'm going to see what happens. Nobody told me, nobody would have told me to do that. I love I it. I just knew. I knew. Deepa said, oh, we're going to try. We're going to just see what happens. I said, I'm not going to do anything unless it feels good. And we're going to see what happens. And you know what? When the end of my rent was due, I walked outside and I didn't have a place to live. And I said, well, we're going to see what happens now. We're going to see what happens now. And there's a story there. But the point is, nobody had to encourage me or motivate me. That lasts for a very short time, brother. When someone encourages you, you make a big list and you set goals and this and this. But it doesn't last. If you, you know, if you go ahead. No, I was, I was just going to say, just piggybacking on that, one of my favorite quotes in the Tao Te Ching is, if you're not afraid to die, there's nothing you can't achieve. And yeah, yeah you got to be willing to take that risk, right? And it has to be, you know what, let me tell you this. I didn't have a lot of things holding me back. Some people say, well, I have kids to feed. I have a husband. I have this and this and this. They have responsibilities. But you know what? Those can be excuses. Everybody has the perfect situation for the life they've chosen, and it's going to be customized. But right. I love what Steve Harvey says. He says, if you jump, the parachute will appear. 
But I have well, best thing I love about that, James, is the parachute doesn't come out right when you jump. No, no. You flying no. down, you flying down, you gotta accept the fact this might be my last jump. This might yeah. be the last thing I ever do on this earth. And then when you can accept, you know, this might be the last thing. There's a sense of surrender, there's a sense of release, there's a sense of I might this might be the last thing I ever do. And then that parachute comes out, you're like, oh yeah. Oh, and then you see, then you see it was worth it. But in the beginning, you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. And you know what? There are no mistakes, James. There are no mistakes. Everyone's like, ooh, failure, ooh, failure. You know, failure is an illusion, James. Failure is an illusion. is basically meaning what I thought was going to happen didn't happen. Well, so what? Who yeah. says what you think? Who says you can predict what's going to happen? What my parents told do, I did, and look what happened. Everything is perfect. You know, James, everything is perfect. Everything is perfect. Listen to me. Everything is perfect. Exactly as it is. Everything is perfect. Everything is perfect. Everything is perfect. Exactly as it is. That doesn't yeah. mean it feels good. Right. That doesn't mean it feels good. But it is what it is. And it's yeah. perfect just as it is because any, anyway, all right, all right, all right, good. Good stuff, good stuff. And and as a former paratrooper, I can appreciate that because you're right, the parachute doesn't open when you jump out. You are really just <laughs> trusting that it's, that it's gonna open up at some point. And the landing isn't always the best, but at least you make it down safely. So I love that imagery of, the parachute, you know, I didn't know Steve Harvey said that, but I love that. I love that. So in your in, in an article I read on your on your page, you said, I've come to the conclusion, you I'm quoting you, I've come to the conclusion that having fun is the biggest and best way to really enjoy life. At the same time, Tim, isn't that like just kind of perfect world talk? Like in a perfect world, is it really possible to have fun? All the time? No, of course not. Because okay. it's like a wave. A wave has peaks and troughs. Anytime it's everything's the same, that means you're dead. Beep, right? There's <laughs> yeah. always peaks and troughs. But you know what it is? You're leaning. You're always leaning in that direction of fun. You always asking yourself, a little bit bad. How can I make this a little more fun? You're open. You start to put yourself in the direction of fun. If someone says, hey, let's make this more fun, you're like, all right, tell me how you want to do it. You're not resisting. You're not resisting fun. And you believe that life can be fun. You believe that you deserve to have fun. You believe that having fun means you're in the zone. When you're in the zone, everything's flowing. It, it's, and so, of course, everyone's – you're always – Step, 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 step in that direction part is seeing yourself step a little more one day to the next. And you you realize, you know what? I forgot what it was like to be lonely, Steve, uh, James. I'm talking Steve. I forgot what it was like to be lonely because I stopped thinking about I mean, I can, I'm not going to go into that. But yeah. if you know, attention to it brings more of it. So attention to it, James, brings more of it. So attention to fun brings more of it. When your kids say, hey, mom, hey, dad, let's put on this music and dance. You're like, you know, I was going to tell you to get your room, but instead, let's do a little dancing instead. And you're not <laughs> right. like, no, I'm not going to dance. I'm not going to dance so you clean your room. That person is resisting fun. The kid says, hey, this, this is your favorite song, mom. Let's dance. You're like, I'm not in the mood to dance right now because you disobeyed me. It's like, come on, mom, let's have a little fun. Now, when you know, hey, wait about it. If it's fun, it's done. If it's fun, it's done. You say, all right, and before you know it, everyone's having a good time. That's what I mean by fun. Yeah, and, and you know what? I, I have a couple of friends on here um, uh, who taught me about the freedom to be. And one of the things I, you know, one thing I always think about is that what you are attracted to in other people is really what's in you. So I, I would see, some, you know, I have some friends who I would see do videos and I'm like, wow, that looks like so much fun. And what I had to recognize was that's, that was part of me and I need to let that part out. So now I kind of just do my little, little videos and, and have fun and so forth and so on. So people like you, Tim, are a mirror to 
what's on the inside of us that's and that attraction is it screaming to yeah. come out is is how I see it. So there are a lot of us who are thankful to you for that. Um, but I, but I, I want to see if we, I can go a little bit deeper with that. Is are we saying all that, right? Are we saying give up resistance to all that is? Should, is there anything that we should resist? Uh, ultimately, no. I like that. Uh, but let me say this: in all fairness, we've all been, we've all grown up in a family, in a system, in a society, with a lot of things that we've learned to keep us safe, to keep us, you know, in the mainstream, to keep us. And it can feel threatening to let go of some of those things, um, and it doesn't feel easy to release resistance in the beginning right. because it feels like you're gonna, what do you, you're gonna, you're letting go of your, of your of the guardrail, you're letting go of the things that kept you safe, but you can, but as you do it more and more, ouch, ouch, ah, cramp. Are as you okay you, over there? I got a cramp on my leg. As you do it more and more, um, as you do it more and more, you just begin to know, oh, this is what it feels like. It's like anyone who's, I've always admired performers, comedians, yeah. actors, people that, you know, get up and really show their passion. And yet you and I both know that moment, that moment right before you're about to do your presentation, you feel like it's so intense and you have to just release. You have, And I love that about performers and about people that do something that's got a stage is they have to release all the expectation. They have to release all the mind chatter and just go and dive in. And that, yeah. that can become a habit. You can realize, wait a minute, I'm resisting the idea that I never want to be poor. I'm resisting the idea that I don't want to be like one of those people. I'm resisting mm -hmm. the idea that someone might see me as a bad parent. Oh, how many, right. how much parent, how much parenting is done because, well, I'd like to do this, but everyone would think I'm a bad parent if I did that. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that, that's tough. Right. You, you know, I want to go, I, I actually want to share something that Anna said. Anna said what, you know, going back to the whole room thing. And I know that was just an example, but you can make that fun, right? Anna, Anna talks about I got it. Anna talks about um, making cleaning the room fun because you could do that instead of so. Are, you know, you can almost make any activity well, fun, I'm, right? You know, I, there's this thing. There's this song. It says like this: If it ain't fun to begin with, baby, I'm <laughs> gonna make it fun. If it ain't fun to begin with, baby, I'm going to make it fun. If it ain't fun to begin with, baby, I'm going to make it fun. Because the more fun, oh, because because having fun, having fun is the best way to get things done. Come on. If it ain't fun to begin with, baby, I'm going to make it fun. If it ain't fun to begin with, baby, I'm going to make it fun. If it ain't fun to begin with, baby, I'm going to make it fun. Because having fun, having fun is the best way to get things done. Having fun, having fun is the best way to get things done. Having fun, having fun is the best way to get done. I love that. I love, I love now, that. Now, there are other ways. Pissing and moaning and gra growling, you'll get it done too. But, oh, my goodness. That's what I say. I told this woman, I said, if you, if you know you got to do it, find a way to make it fun. And yeah. sometimes you just got to think, Hey, maybe I'll call a friend. Maybe I'll put on some music. Maybe I'll do this. But life is never going to be all easy because that's boring, James. It's yeah. boring. If if how many times you cut? If someone asked you for you, I got a question for you. You ready? What's two plus two? You're like that's ridiculous. And life doesn't give us all right. What's two plus? Life life doesn't insult us. It yeah. always gives us something that might seem difficult. And so we, of course, we're going to have challenges that seem difficult. It's like, that's where you get to see your progress. That's where you get to practice these ideas because we get more of what I focus on, focus on, focus on. I get more of what I focus on, focus on right now. I get more of what I focus on, focus on, focus on. More of what I focus on, focus on right now. Yeah. So I focus yeah. on feeling good, feeling good, feeling good. Focus on the feeling good, feeling good right now. So I focus on the feeling good, feeling good, feeling good. Focus on the feeling good, feeling good right now. So the question is, James, where are you directing your thoughts? Yeah. It's not about it's not about the circumstances or the environment. It's like, wait a minute. Where are my thoughts 
focus right now. Mm, mm, that's powerful, Tim. You, you take it from outside to where is your direction of focus in this moment and to shine a light on what you want more of and you start to see more of it and more of it shows up and you say, oh, my life is so beautiful. And your coworker says, oh, yeah, easy for you to say. You got this easy life. It's like, oh, I built that by my focus. I built my life by my object of focus. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I always say whatever you give your attention to, you give life to. And whatever you take attention away yeah. from dies. And so people who are dealing with maybe illness or, and obviously you got to, there's a certain process you got to go through with that. So you right. have to focus some attention, but taking your attention, putting your attention on life when you're dealing with sickness or putting your attention on wealth when you're dealing with limitations in some way. I absolutely believe uh, in that, Tim. And, and sometimes those things can have a strong emotional pull on you, but you have to find that space of stepping back and redirecting your attention. Would, is that accurate to say? Yes. Yeah. You know what? Come on, people. Come on, people. We're here. We're here writing an epic story. We're here writing an epic tale. You want your story to be boring? Oh, there once was a young woman who stubbed her toe and then she rubbed it and it was better. The end. Nobody's going to watch that. Nobody's going to watch that movie. Nobody's going to read that book. We like right. epic stories. We like epic journeys. And so when yeah. someone has cancer or something, I'm like, dang, you sure picked an amazing part of your story. And they're like, no, no, my, my mother, my mother has, I'm getting my cable. My mother has cancer. And then this is the craziest thing. We've been trained to go, oh, sorry to hear that. Oh, sorry to hear that my mother's writing an epic story. Yes. Yes. Now, oh, but, 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 but she's depressed. Of course. Of course. In the beginning, she's depressed. And she might be depressed for six months, but she's going to rise. She's going to rise. She's going to find that, you know, she's, you know, Anita Morjani dying to be me. I don't know the whole story, but she wanted, she was such a people pleaser. She put tumors all over her body until she finally went into a coma, had heavenly visions and came back and all the tumors disappeared. Yeah. That's an epic story. Yeah. Now, if you want to live an epic story, you're going to create epic circumstances that seem insurmountable. Wow, Tim. Wow. You, but how many, how much, how good does it feel to say, oh, I'm writing an epic story. That's why I just got fired and I got it homeless because I'm writing an epic. Now, the point is, the fact is you might have a situation that's true, but how are you going to look at it? And the yeah. thing I love helping people do is to small. You're here to write an epic story, to create an epic story. And that means shit's going to happen. Yeah. Stop yeah. thinking in price. Stop being like, yeah. oh, my goodness. So what's wrong? Oh, my car. Like, it's like, what kind of story you want to write? And I really, really, I, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, I believe that's why I chose to be homeless is because I like how that plays in the story. Yeah. I like how it yeah. plays. I learned how to be happy living in the park. People say, oh, Tim, why don't you believe in your abundance, Tim? Why don't you believe in a million? Oh, if you come with me, I'll give you, show you six-figure income. I'm like, no, 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 that ain't my story. Yeah. My story isn't I went with coach so-and-so and they showed me how to make a six-figure income. That's not, my story's epic. My story's I went to nothing. I went to, because I'm an extreme person. Yeah. yeah. Everyone is, is extreme as me. Not everyone is extreme as me, but I've always been yeah. extreme. When I traveled, I've been all over the world. I've been to the, I've been to the, in South Africa, I've been in the Kurt, I've been in Northwest China, I've been to these crazy places. So that's fine, that's me. But every time I feel sorry for myself, man, everybody goes, Oh, really? You want me just to poof and make this all go away? So you just backed it? I'm like, No, I don't actually. I like the story. I like the. Do you, do you love your story? Do you love your story? Don't fall in love with your story because your story is your story and nobody else has it. Nobody else is yeah. making it except you. But if you don't love it, and you, if you're re okay, if you're resisting your own story, yeah. that's a miserable life. Yeah, because all you get is the yeah. misery without the conclusion at the end. And now, in the end, when you die, I believe you get all. When you finally die, you get all the goodies. But why not start to live some of the 
final chapter of your story while you're still alive and get some of the, you know, get. Yeah. Good, good stuff, Tim. I mean, that, that, that gets me excited about my story. Get excited about your story. That's, I just, that's a new, that's a new thing I came up with since we've been talking. Get excited. That's would be, a, that would be a workshop. Get excited about your story. And wow. really, it's about embracing all the ele- I grew up with a crippled leg. I grew up half blind. I Oh, do you feel sorry for Stevie Wonder? I don't think so. He's <laughs> given us some of the most beautiful music of all time. Oh, but he's blind. Come on now. How wow. short-sighted. I can't see. Man, he sees with his heart. He doesn't need to see visually. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed yeah. if he wanted to get his vision restored. That's all. That's people do that too. That might be someone else's story. Right. I was blind. And then I found a way for that could be someone else's story, but it's not his story. Yes. Yes. And yes. when we start to appreciate your story is unique. Your story is your love, your story. Then it's depression. We embrace sadness. We embrace fear. We embrace doubt. Like it's part of my story. I'm not going to resist it. I'm not going to push it away. I'm not going to say, oh, my story should be like her story because she, yeah. she, she did this. She pushed a button and she got the cookie. I pushed a button and, and I got a snake. What's up with that? Her story. Yeah. You know, you want to hear her story's different. Her story's different. Her story's different. Your story's, her story's not this. How, how many would read the, a book with a different title and different characters that was the same story? Oh, this one is, is called uh, Jessica, and this story is called Mary. And you're like, wait a minute. It's the same <laughs> story I just read. All the names are different. Right. Like, I'm not going to watch this. Right. Oh, that's right. good stuff. That's good stuff. Embrace good your stuff. story. I lo- I'm, I'm going to reread. I'm going to read. I'm going to see this again over and over just for that part. I love that. I absolutely love that. And, and going into, because we're going to talk about Abraham. We're going to talk about Abraham Hicks. All right. Um, which kind of gives you, which kind of helps you realize that you have the power to write the final ending of your story. But you are a member of a few Abraham groups and you have absolutely the funniest voiceover of Abraham on YouTube. <laughs> Do you know I have listened to that every day since you sent that to me? Really? Every single day. It doesn't need any more work. <laughs> Sometimes it's done, I have it's seen, magnificent. It's done and it's magnificent. It's I love done. that. I love that. Yeah. I, I sometimes I've seen that thing twice a day. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. I, I was this morning as I was getting ready, I was going over that out loud. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's great. So, it's great. I love that. Is it fair to say that Abraham um Hicks has had a big or at least some influence on you? Um, and if so, can you share in what way? Yes, it's fair. Very fair. Um, the teachings of Abraham Hicks touched me in such a fundamental way. I believe I wasn't ready for them until when I found them, which is always true, because they mm-hmm. really put it all back on us. Be happy. Have fun. You you have your own. Yeah. It basically affirms I have my own guidance system. If it feels good, it is. It's true. If it, you know the whole fact that. I'm here to create my reality. I'm here to create from a place of love and passion. And if it doesn't feel good, that means it's not true that God, that the universe is full of love and pouring love. And, 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 you know, I just love the Abraham's irreverence and like, you know, why are you asking us? You got the answers. I love how they're not trying to pull anyone in. There's not a, it's like, there's not a sense of control. It's total yeah. freedom. I love yeah. the feeling of they're just totally free. Say you go do it. You go do what makes you happy and you got it. And people have questions. Yeah. Like, yeah, but what about this? What about that? And I used to listen to hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. It's like, okay, I get it now. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of in the early day, I would just listen to Abraham seminars and and, tran- and and transcribe some of the parts or I go, oh, this is good or this is interesting. And and the one thing I really love about Abraham is the vortex. That every time we know what we don't want, that's called contrast, and we shoot a rocket of desire for what we do want. And every time we do that, it's being held for us. It's Mm -hmm. there for us. It's not going anywhere. But as we relax and allow, those things that we want start to come into our experience. Uh, You know, and I love knowing that everything I want is coming to me. I love knowing everything I want is coming to me. Yeah. 
Yeah. I love knowing that everything I want is coming to me. I love knowing that everything I want is coming to me. I said, I love knowing that everything I want is coming to me. I, I, I love knowing. And all I got to do is get happy. I said, all I got to do is get happy. I said, all I got to do is get happy. One more time. I love knowing that everything I want is coming to me. I love knowing that everything I want is coming to me. I said, I love knowing. That everything I want is coming to me. I, I, I love knowing that all I got to do is get happy. I said, all I got to do is get happy. I said, all I got to do is get happy, which means I don't have any resistance, which means I'm being easy about it, which I mean I can't get it wrong and I never get it done, which means all I got to do is have fun, fun, fun in the best way I can in each moment with no self-judgment or condemnation. Because there's regret is for suckers, self-doubt is for suckers. So you always can't believe in yourself because you always know exactly what you're doing. It's something like that. Yeah, yeah, I love Woo! it. I'm gonna give yeah, myself a hand. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know how you you know how you know what you're doing from source is because you know or so how I know is because when I listen back to it, I go, Oh, that's good. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's like it's like you're receiving this divine touch, and you're like, "Oh man, that's nice." I'm a, I'm a, yeah. I'm a channel of it, but I don't create it yeah. in my mind. And when you create it, you're like, "Ah, oh, it kind of sucks." Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I love that, Tim. I absolutely love that. Now, I, I'm going to give people a little background on you, and then we're going to bring it to the Abraham thing. You okay. were a Christian missionary at one point, right? Yes. So how do you go from because I, I know being a Christian minister from for for over 20 years, kind of delving into something different than that was kind of like, OK, should I be doing this? Da da da. I mean, obviously, it it served my, it served its purpose. But was, was there any trepidation in going from, OK, because the Bible kind of serves as like a fence. You only go out so far. So how did you go from that to Abraham? Like, did you feel any certain way about that? I, I I started tramping down the fence and it was like, you know, yeah, of course there's a bit of like, I know how I used to think about people like me. Yeah. Backslider, backslider, all this stuff. And I had to just let it go. Um, you know what? I, I discovered Jesus when I was 17. I was racked with guilt and shame about drinking, about swearing, about masturbation, all these. Oh, and you know what? That's still kind of the, the, the thing is that, we're born broken according to the Bible and we need God to right. fix us. I'm like, Oh no, it's all good. I look around. <laughs> I said, the earth is the Lord and everything in it. And the earth is perfect. The earth is beautiful. The earth is in harmony. So, you know, I just had to let it go. And, um, I'm so much happier now. Oh yes. my goodness. Oh yes. my, I, I, everyone, everyone, I bless everyone in their path. I bless my job is to be uh, only, my only responsibility is what I'm focusing on right now that's my only responsibility you know your only responsibility in the world what you're fo focusing on right now not yesterday not tomorrow right now yeah 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 i love that now now one of the teachings of abraham and i've heard you say this um i think you said this during our conversation you said if i want it i can have it oh yeah that's just the way it is well if it's if it's true the next question is how do i get it how do I get it? If I want it, I can have it. How do I get it? You just got to relax, baby. It wants to come to you. What I want wants me. You just got to relax. And you got to wow. start already. Okay, James, you got to yeah. already start having it in your vibrational experience. Yeah. yeah. You got to yeah. already like attracts like. If you're feeling lonely and needy and dreaming about Mr. Right or Miss Right, you're lined up with the scarcity of Mr. Right. Not, you got to feel fulfilled within yourself before Mr. Miss Right or whatever comes. That's the trick. It's almost like it's a trick. It's like, yeah. oh, you want that over there? Okay. Find the feeling of already having it. And you yeah. say, yeah, but then why do I need it? Exactly. Then you don't need it. Then it's going to come to you because it's going to match you. You know when you get everything you want? When you learn to be happy without it. 
People yeah. say, oh, no, no, no. You know why we hate that? Because we've been taught, do your homework and you get a cookie. Yeah. We've been taught, do this yeah. thing you don't want to get this thing you do want. How many people work to do the things they want to do after work? Yeah. A yeah. lot. A lot. Yeah. I did. That's why I quit. I said, I'm no longer going to prostitute myself for Ooh. money so that I can have free time afterwards. Right. That's a strong right. word, but every, but if you're doing it, if you're not doing it from the heart, you're doing it from fear, you're doing it from societal necessity on some lane. Hey, being a prostitute's a great thing in that sense, but you got to do what you got to do. That's fine. But the point is we, this is the trick. It's like, we've been trained to think, do this thing you don't want and you'll get this thing you do want. And we just yeah. carry that out to our life. And it's like, well, if you believe that, but that never felt good to me. I couldn't play along with that. I never found my, my rhythm with that. And so I like Mark Twain who said, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Mm. And I'm like, well, how do you get that? Well, this is what I, this is how, why I jumped. I had to get that. I had to get that. And yeah. you know what? I, my job is to be happy right now, happy right now, happy right now. And all that stuff will come, but it'll still be like, oh, hey, like I, my vision is, uh, it's like this. It's like, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling excited. I'm having me a party and my money is invited. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling excited. I'm having me a party and my money is invited. So come on, come on, come on in. Come on, come on. That's me talking to money. Come on in. The party is a jumping, so just jump on in. The party's already jumping, so I'm going to ask money, jump on in. I'm yeah. feeling good, I'm feeling excited. I'm having me a party and my money is invited. My lover is invited, my house is invited, my job is invited. So come on, come on, come on in. Come on, come on, come on in. Come on, come on, come on in. The party is a jumping, I'm happy without it. So just jump on in. If we can say my job is to get happy now, period. Right. right. Period. Now, there's going to be reasons why it's tough. To, I'm not saying it's easy. Right. If we can be. The stuff's going to come. But you're adding the stuff, the lover, the how to an already existing good time. Yeah. To already existing good time. And it can come. It can leave. It can come and go. It's not going to change the party. That takes practice. I got to tell you, it does take practice. Yeah. And, and, and I love that. I was talking to a friend recently and, and um, she's, she, she wants her, her soul made her. And I was, I was telling her that she needs to make space in her closet. She needs to put a plate at the table. <laughs> she needs to have conversations throughout the house as if she was talking to him. And, and I love that added feature of had, just have fun with it. Just enjoy, yeah. just have fun with it. Um, let me say this. So let I, me say this. this is an important point. Abraham talks about it. Everything mm -hmm. is two stick. Is two sides of the same stick. So mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of broke people like to talk about money. Mm -hmm. But which side of the stick are you activating? The I mm -hmm. don't have any, or the, so even if she's putting a plate, is she looking at that seat going, yeah, there's a plate, but there's nobody there. Or is she having fun? That's why you gotta be you gotta be aware of how it feels. How does yeah. it feel? Yeah. And I stay general. I stay general. I like I love feeling good. I love the abundant universe. I love knowing that I'm a part of the abundant universe. I love feeling abundant. I can feel abundant right now. I can feel good right now. I stay general because on a topic like money, I have a lot of years of practicing not enough. So when I start bringing specific dollar amounts and this and that, the not enough part is activated. And that's right. why I stay, stay general, have fun with it. She goes, you know, and as long as she's having fun, it feels good. She's on the right track. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Now, now Tim, you are a poet, a songwriter, a rhymer, all of that. And you shared a couple of songs with us today, kind of got his finger snapping and all that. What's your process in coming up with these, these, uh, these amazing that's a good questions? It's a good question. Uh, get in receptive mode. Receptive mode, receptive mode, where I love to be. Because when I'm in receptive mode, I feel so fine and free. Receptive mode, receptive mode, it's where I love to be. Because when I'm in receptive mode, I feel so fine and free. 
basically means a state of allowing, a state of just yeah. being. Now, this is the key. This is the key. You got to trust it. You got to trust what you get. This is the biggest thing for people who want to create. You got to take what comes and you got to go with it. You got to step with it. So I'll just be chilling. I'll be relaxing. I'll get an idea. The rhyme, all, Almost all my songs and poems rhyme because that's how I think. Mm-hmm. And you got to act on it. So I, in the beginning, I was posting little um, po- little quotes, little mm-hmm. four-line songs, little ditties, little this. And I just did it every day, every day, every day. Every time that inspiration comes, you you follow it. You act on it. Even, this, even in a small, small way. It might mean making a little Facebook post. It might mean writing it down. But hopefully – you begin to it. It gets to be where when you get the inspiration. Like yesterday, I got I got uh, my latest song. I was in Walmart. I was walking around Walmart, looking for a place to, to record the song. Then I went outside. I was looking for a spot. I eventually went out around by the Home Depot, and I got I got her. I'm the kind of person that has to do it now. You might be yeah. someone that can put it put it on the back burner and do it later. But I'm gonna do it now. And it was the one about uh, pay attention to it. You get more of it. Mm-hmm. And, and I was like, oh man, oh. Oh, it's a good one. And I and I got it and I got the song and I was I was moving. So your inspiration is always coming. Right. It's always coming in different forms. Just follow it. Follow it. Follow it in a small way. And as you do it, you're gonna get where follow it just becomes natural. It just becomes yeah. natural. I like what you're saying of capturing it in the moment. There are so many things that come through my mind and I'm in so many different places. Sometimes I pull out my phone and make, make a quick note. But a lot of stuff I I, I don't. I have to be honest. I, I I hear it in my mind. I don't always write it down. Right. But I love, I love that you capture it in the moment because how can you lose it if you do that, right? Well, I got to tell people because of the way we've been raised, we've been told usually someone else has told us what to do. Yeah. M- mother and father, you know, stand up, sit down, eat this, wear this, and, and then they go to school and tell you to do this, do this, do this. And so we don't trust our own inspiration. Um, and really the, the key to joy is learning to trust your inspiration of all else. And yeah. there's no, e- let me tell you, there's no easy way to it because most people that you know aren't doing that, but the people you admire are. Okay. Right. That's a good one. Most people you know aren't trusting their inspiration, but the people that you admire are. And that's why we admire them because you go, you know what? That guy's living from his inspiration, whatever it is, painting, business, whatever, even Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, they follow their inspiration. They don't doubt themselves. And the first thing we need to do is love. You know, let me tell you, other people can only love me, James, to the degree that me. Yes, I agree. Ooh. I see that all the time. Only people, all the time. Can respect, only people can respect my vision to the degree I respect my vision. So if you say, yeah, nobody respects my vision, that's not the issue. The issue is you don't respect your vision. Yeah. I they're, give that to They're imitating yeah. you. Yeah, I like that. Term. And you know what? I, I, would, I would say that is a sense that takes courage because you have to be willing to go on a path that no one else might understand and no one else might be encouraging. And it's not about them, but you got to start to make it about you. You got to start to take it from what does everyone think about this to what do I think about this? And there, then there becomes the responsibility. I want to be responsible to my own passion and vision. And that is the place of, you know, I'm so consistent when I was younger and I was in the workplace, I was consistent day for me is almost the same because I feel like I just start honoring my own inspiration and there, then go because it's always flowing. Our inspiration is always flowing. We're, there's never a shortage of inspiration. But if yeah. so, the only time we feel wobbly is when we start listening to everybody else. And then it's like, whoa, who should I listen to them or me? And yeah. we practice, we practice through that. Good, good stuff, Tim. Good stuff. And in, in another article on your um, page, you talked about the vibrational playground is is life and earth is the vibrational playground, but you also talked about the purpose of life is expansion. As it relates to expansion, can you tell us what you mean by that and how that exactly works? How, how does expansion work? Well, essentially, we come from a place of infinite oneness and abundance to a very place where we we purposely put ourselves in limit and limit. We do that. You know, think of and can't take care of. The, 
Yeah, we do it intentionally from our non-physical vantage point. That's really teaching of Abraham. But mm -hmm. from our non-physical vantage point, we choose to come because every time we feel the restriction, there's a gap. Because when we shoot that rock, like when uh, when you when you're treated poorly by you, I told you to get in yard, and you, we're someone's angry at us. We're like, ah, that does I don't like that. Mm -hmm. We shoot a rocket for love, acceptance, patience. Yeah. I'm angry. And there's a gap. Yeah. Every time we shoot that rocket of what we desire, that's expansion. And anything that feels like I want to see this change, I want to see things better, that's because we now are our, our truest self has be already become that person. And so mm -hmm. our job is to catch up with our expanded self, who every right. time you see something you don't like, the version that you do like becomes created in your mind. Right. And now – are you going to start living the new version or stay stuck in the problem? Like, yeah, but people, you focused on the people that created it. And that's what a lot of us go through is we focus on the thing that happened bad instead of what we would like to see and focusing on that solution. And that's the, that's the perfect way to say that, Tim. That's how I, I agree with that. It's like we create that rocket of desire, but we're still, and if we focus on that, that's the direction we're going to go in, but we stay focused on what is now something that happened in the past Right. And we make that our reality. But now, but so it's kind of there waiting for us to set our attention on it, to go in that direction. But we, we delay it by focusing on the woe is me, right? Great, great point. And I think that's the essence of all complaining is this thing, this thing I don't like happened. And now I know what I do like. But look at this thing. Oh, let me yeah. tell you about this thing that happened today. This lady was rude on the bus and she bumped in me. I mean, I would if it were my choice, everyone would be kind to each other on the bus. They'd be respectful. But this lady, let me tell you about this lady. She bumped me. Well, <laughs> but but if, I, if it was up to me, everyone wouldn't act like, oh, how would they act? They wouldn't act like this lady. They would act, well, how would they act? I don't know, but they wouldn't act like this lady. Now right. we're stuck. We're stuck in the thing that happened instead of like, well, tell me, how would you like, oh, okay, yeah. let, wait a minute. I would love to see people cooperating, respecting. Ooh, let me talk about that. I want to see people loving each other, respecting. I want to respect myself. I want to respect. Now you're, you're lining up with the solution. Right. And then you might go, and then the next day you might go and go, man, people are so nice on the bus. I don't know why. It's like, hmm, could it be that you allowed yourself to line up with the solution now instead of focusing on the problem? And it's like, oh, maybe. And that's why I, you, you, we get a mirror every day. Someone's rude to you. Thank you. Yeah. I know it's hard to say that, but thank you. You just show me I'm being rude to myself. Right. And you mirrored it to me. Right. I, I, I love that. I tell people with, who, who, who relationships are, you know, have failed or I said, you should thank that person because they showed you what you've been creating. Now you have a choice to create differently. You know, whatever shows up in your <laughs> that you don't yeah, like. Yeah, Jay, but let me tell you, let me tell you about this dog though. Let me it's like no, <laughs> and, and that's the thing, it's like, you know, if it feels good, talk about it. Yeah. If it feels good, talk about it. What you talk about, you get more of. And I love, I really love the mechanics of how this works because yeah. it's easy for us to read a book about this and go, Oh, this is a great book. Yeah, and then hey, I told you to pick up your socks. And we didn't connect yeah. the book to the experience. And I'm like, wait right. a minute, you know. Uh, I'm responsible for what I'm focusing on right now. And you know what? The, if, if I were to, that's why I named my imaginary company what I did. It's that if the message I have, I love sharing is, what are you focusing on right now? And say, oh, do you want more of that? Yeah. Oh, um, no. Well, then what could, what could you focus on instead? Or take your focus off and go general. Just breathe or sing or whatever. And that's, that's really what my songs help. Instead of going to a negative place, stop and sing a song or think a nice thought or pet your cat or whatever. Because as you stop focusing on the negative, the positive is going to keep coming in more and more. That's great news. Yeah, yeah, yeah That's yeah. great news. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, when we talked, you, you, you spoke about people not connecting with their inner guidance. Um, how, do you, how do we connect with our inner guidance? How, how does that work? What, what am I looking for a voice? Am I, you know, is, I'm, is that's the intuition that you're talking about, right? Oh, looks like we lost Tim real quick. Um, he's going to be back, so be patient with us. But Tim was, Tim and I was talking early in the week about connecting with our inner guidance. And a lot of people um, have lost touch with that, either because they hear 
a voice inside them saying, do this, do that. But because they don't follow it, they lose it. So the when you don't follow your intuition, when you don't follow that that prompting, that that kind of motivating thing to uh, to do that may not seem like something you've done before or may feel different than how you think it should go. When we don't follow that intuition, we lose the ability to hear that voice. All right, I got Tim back here. Give me one second. Um, but Tim's gonna Tim's gonna elaborate on that. But Tim, I was talking to. I can you hear you. me? I got you. Yeah. Let me. Let me. I, I'm ready to answer. Um, okay. You know the voice of the voice in our head is pretty loud because it's been yeah. put there by people that we've cared about, mother, father, pastor, God, whoever, and the yeah. voices are like, "Hey, do that." They're pointing. They're they're like, and the still. I do believe that still small voice that says in the Bible. I do believe that's where getting alone, going on a walk, clearing your mind, and then watching what rises up within, watching what bubbles up. And you know what? Source, universe, God is never, does never yells. It's always, hey, how yeah. about this? This sounds good. And you have to learn that it's a very small voice, but it's always like, oh, that's, yeah, it feels good. It's very small. It's very light. It's very suggestive. It's not, hey, you do this. It's never pushy. It's never judgmental. So, um, it just becomes learning that fine tuning of, hey, that's a good idea. I like that. It's almost like it's below the surface, but you yeah. just begin. It doesn't want to be imposing into your conscious mind. It's more like a su subtle suggestion, and it's just learning that that's it. That's all it is. It's not going to yell. It's not going to try to rival. It's not going to out scream the voice of your right. mother. Yeah. You shut up, lady. I'm here to tell her that she could be happy. You be quiet. You know, like Jerry Springer show. It's like, okay, if you're going to listen to her, I'll just chill out here. I'll be here. Yeah. Wait till everybody's talked and then I'll be here when you're ready to listen to the quiet voice. And, and I like that you say the quiet voice because the ego is always talking as well. And I always say the ego is that insistent, intrusive, you know, uh, voice that we hear that, that just doesn't want to be quiet and is always loud. But that inner guidance voice is the quiet voice. It is. And that's yeah. So we have to quiet the noise in our environment and in our mind to be able to connect with that voice. So I, I, I like that. Yeah. Now you talk about, you talk mm -hmm. about people looking for permission to be when we spoke. Yeah. And, and they see that, you know, cause I was talking about you living, living free and so forth. What do you mean by looking for permission to be? What, what does that mean exactly? That they're looking for permission to be. I think, I think the biggest switch someone has to do in their mind is when they stop when they realize they've been conditioned trained socialized from a young age it's just how we've set it up mm -hmm. and they maybe to some degree or another they're living their life based on all those expectations of what they what a good person like me would do or should mm -hmm. do or what my mother said or what blah blah to to just deciding that that's there okay but that now i'm switching my my look my allegiance i'm switching my loyalty to my inner voice and that really is when I decide that me connecting with me is the greatest way I can be happy and serve the world. So although that stuff was there to help me create my desires and I'll almost make who I am, sharpen my desires. Now, in order to line up with those desires, I have to let those all those voices go. Yeah. And I have to put my voice listening to me as primary. Yeah. And that is when you start to say, I, I have permission just to be me because you never know what's going to happen, Jays. When you start being you, as you know, you're dancing for the camera. You know, 20 years ago, you might have thought that was ridiculous or someone in your life might have said, calm down, man. It's not being, you know, someone might still think that's silly. It's like, yeah, exactly. you know what? Exactly. If my job was to listen to you, I'd care, but it's not anymore. It's my job to listen to me. And I got to follow my inner guidance. That's the loyalty. That's the allegiance. Be loyal to yourself. Be loyal yeah. to your inner guidance. Now, what do you say to people who say that's that's selfish? Because I, I personally think selfishness is self love and if self care. But how do you handle criticism <laughs> uh, and of uh, people saying that's selfish? Selfish is a broken word, James. Okay, you, what know, do you, mean why, you know why? It's, you know why it's a broken word? Because anybody who tells you you're being selfish has just been selfish because they're calling you selfish because you didn't give them something they want. Which means anytime the word's used, it's it's uh, void, null, null and void. Yeah. Do you wow. know what I mean? Yeah. That's, stop, that's, being, that's, stop being so selfish and do the way I want to do it. Oh, yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. Basically, basically, selfish means why are you not letting me manipulate you according to my plan and desires? You're selfish. Right. right. In other words, it's That's a way not- to make you it's a way to make you feel bad for not listening to me. So you'll come back into my fold and do what I think you should do, whether it's mother, father, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I, I like that. That sounds like something Byron Katie would say. Yeah. So let's um, we, we're going to and, and Tim, you've been awesome. We're going to we're going to bring this. To close here, but I want to ask you a few questions. Okay. I just want you to finish the sentence. All right. Life is an adventure. Okay. The world needs nothing. It's already perfect. I love it. Love is alignment, clarity. And and the final one is, I would like to thank. Oh my goodness! Oh, I just gosh. <laughs> you know, on a practical level, I just love. That's a hard one. That's a hard one because I like to thank everybody because they're, they've all been amazing actors in my, in my epic story. They've all played, they've all played the part of the villain or the hero or the rescuer for me. And even the people that I felt were antagonistic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everything I want is on its way. You know, it's like everyone has played the part because it's a divine comedy. It's a divine story. And yeah. even the person I think has nothing to do with me is it has a role, you exactly. know, and the, I'd like to thank the all that isness of all that is of all of us. And the fact that and I would I just I love when the people get encouraged by the songs and, and I love that. But that's very ego based. Oh, I like that you like my song. I like you, too. That's very ego based. But I do like it. Um, okay. <laughs> but I lo- I, I'm thankful for the all that is. And the f- I am very happy that I've. Finally, let myself be me. I'm very happy. Whew, it was a long. It was a long. It was a long uh, preparation. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Sure. Uh, and and Tim, before we any closing remarks before we close out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you give us a song before you. Okay. Before you, but any closing remarks you wanna you wanna share? Well. Just, you know, the unfolding is perfect. Oh, yes, I've decided. So I chill and stay still and feel utterly guided. Now, I love this nugget. The unfolding is perfect. Oh, yes, I have decided. The unfolding is perfect because I say so. I'm the boss. I choose what I think. I choose what I feel. I choose what I do. I'm a powerful creator and I'm keeping it real. Yeah. 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 It means what I say it means. It means what I say it means. Yeah. That's that's mind blowing. And just the fact that <clears throat> the unfolding is perfect. Oh yes, I've decided. So I chill and stay still and feel utterly guided. I love knowing where you are is perfect. Your ability to hear your inner being right now is perfect. Your ability to listen to nonsense is perfect. Your ability to realize your perfect life right now is perfect. Because what that does, James, it it takes away the resistance to, I should be somewhere else. How come I'm here? I want to be there. I want to be here. I want to be there. And it's tempting because we spent spent a lot of our lives thinking we could we just want to be at recess we want to be at lunch we want to be home from school we want to be at the weekend we want it to yeah. be the summer we want it yeah. to be vacation and yeah. then we we forget to say and i love the the switch that happens when i say oh wow that sounds perfect i just lost my job and my boyfriend broke up with me and my car crashed oh that sounds perfect <laughs> that's so me that's so me i love it i love it I it love sounds it. cruel but it's like can you embrace that it's perfect yeah because yeah. pushing pushing against it's just going to bring you more of it Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Tim, oh. give it, close us out with a song, my friend. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I might do the one from yesterday. I'm trying to think. I, sometimes I forget. Let me see what it was. Uh, it's so it's so uh, let me find my little. Re- I have a recorder. I record the snippet. Um, OK. Rain, more OK. 
Since attention to it brings more of it, attention to it brings me more of it. Since attention to it brings me more of it, I'm a focus on the things that I want more of. I said attention to it brings me more of it, attention to it brings me more of it, attention to it brings me more of it. So I'm focused on on things that I want more of. I said attention to it brings me more of it. Attention to it brings me more of it. Attention to it brings me more of it. So I'm focusing on things that I want more of. Good feeling, good feeling, good feeling things. Everyone I know is perfect right now. Woo. I love it. I love it, Tim. I love it. Now, so if someone wants to reach out to you, how is, how do you how do they contact you through your Facebook through the, yeah, the best the, the 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 first point of entry is Facebook you know facebook.com slash dream catalyst a group Facebook. dr funds uh, community of feeling good now deliberate creators which I didn't talk about deliberate creation but that basically means when you take control of what you focus on now you're a deliberate creator you take everyone okay. else out of the picture and you say what I focus on is what I can control I'm a deliberate creator and that's the, to me that's the one key and the only person I can help or influence are those who are already deliberate creators. So, yeah. uh, but you can join my group. Basically I post songs all the time. I post quotes, I post feel good things. And, uh, and then I have a website and albums and stuff, but you can all find that through there. So I have a website, awesome. Tim McGinnis, Tim McGinnis dot fun. That's actually a website, Tim McGinnis dot fun. Okay. Let me make sure I have, I, I type this in for the people, Tim McGinnis dot fun. Yeah, that's actually a a, a, pre, a suffix is f u n is now a, a dot com, but dot fun. Awesome, awesome. That's great, isn't it? All right, well, my friend, I I want you to hold while I close out. I want to thank everyone for listening in. This has been awesome. I can't wait to to for the replay. <laughs> so, um, and I definitely want to I definitely want to do this again with you, Tim. This has been awesome. But I don't yeah. want to thank everybody who who tuned in, who listened, who will end up listening. Um, I hope you were as as uh, excited and blessed as I was, and I will talk with you all soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>